Bog is having a little trouble getting the Omni to work. It may be frozen. This is great. Just terrific. Stupid Omni brings us to the middle of Siberia. Green light all the way. And the stupid thing won't take us out. What do you expect? That thing's at least 20,000 years overdue for servicing. And he can't service it because his guidebook is still back with Jeffrey's dog in 1982. There. There was. Siberia may have been better. They have a knack for landing in the middle of things like this. It's 1917, the Omni is red, and Bog has no idea where they are or who's fighting. The one side appear to be Arabs. Jeffrey doesn't know about the other guys. <laughs> That's right, it's none other than Lawrence of Arabia. T.E. Lawrence was a British officer at the time, and he was assigned as a liaison between the British, who were fighting the Germans in World War I, and the Arab forces that were rebelling against the Turkish Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans were allies of the Germans, and taking strategic cities and installations around the eastern Mediterranean was critical to the Allied victory. Lawrence basically rallied all the scattered Arab forces, pulled them together, and chased the Ottomans out. One of his first major victories was capturing the seaport town of Aqaba on the Red Sea. That's what he's trying to do right now, and failing. That was ill-advised. Save yourself, kid! Work. The way that fire was starting to surround him, there wasn't much else he could do. He lands in Thomas Edison's front yard and loses consciousness. A glass won't hold a vacuum. What's for lunch? Well, I made sandwiches out of last night. Do you hear something? Last night's what? I doubt if he does. As the old joke goes, Edison was deaf in one ear and couldn't hear out of the other, or at least could hear very little. Right now, his wife is trying to take care of Jeffrey. Could be so important. Thomas, what do you make of this? I'll take it to the shop. Just don't fiddle with any buttons or dials, or you may get the surprise of your life. She insists it belongs to the boy and he shouldn't do that, but he's not listening. In fact, he can't listen, which he considers an advantage. The Commandant of Aqaba Prison is introducing the people to their new companion. Here he is. Here is your blue-eyed hero of your Arab army. This is the Englishman who says that you desert tribesmen can defeat the Turks. Hmm? We must talk to him. There is no time for talk. He's got Lawrence tied to a post, and he says, tomorrow morning at 8, you get the firing squad. They're pouring dirt down the well. That means somebody's digging a tunnel somewhere. If Bog can get in good with them, maybe they have a chance to get Lawrence out of there, to say nothing of themselves. Jeffrey wakes up, and when he notices the Omni is missing, his first order of business is to get it back. Well, kid, welcome to Menlo Park. That may take some doing. Jeffrey goes ballistic, but Edison says, Don't worry, as long as you don't touch anything, I can put it back together. He's trying to figure out how it works. He can't find a power source, and a good electric light hasn't even been developed yet, and this thing has a little red one. But before he can get much further, he has a couple of rather important visitors. And without the mustache is Grosvenor Lowry, one of the biggest backers of the Edison Light Company. Who's the other guy? The biggest backer, J.P. Morgan. And neither backer is very happy. Edison says, we're making the filaments out of lamp black, pure carbon, and there's no reason why it shouldn't work. He demonstrates.
your filament is too big. It's getting too hot and shattering the glass. Morgan says, you're getting nowhere and I've thrown enough money at it. I'm pulling out. Mr. Morgan! Yes, son. Haven't got much time. Haven't got much sense either. How many kids will ever get the chance to tell one of the richest men in the country that he's a dunce? Before Twitter, that is. What? Uh, please, son. Thomas Edison is the greatest inventor alive. The phonograph, the repeating telegraph. He even made the telephone work better. That is not what's at issue. Look, you want to make some money, right? It's a general idea, yes. Well, then what other inventor would you rather invest your money in? Thomas Edison's got a track record that just won't quit. Track record. <laughs> Interesting expression. Yes, it's a horse racing term. Horse racing and that expression were around long before you were. He really is a dunce. You miss out on the electric light, and you're going to miss out on an invention that's going to change the face of this world. There's a gold mine here. Morgan relents and says, I want to see some real progress in 48 hours. He leaves, and Edison says, You heard the man. Let's get to work. Bog found a window with loose bars just above the stables, and he's come up with a plan to get Lawrence out. He doesn't know that the woman and her friends have finished digging their tunnel, and they're also planning to get Lawrence out. Burn! Burn! So much for their plan. I need men over here. Bring water from the well. They sneak up to the open window, shinny down a rope, and grab a couple of horses. Lawrence, did you really think it was going to be so easy? No, but Bog did. So now we'll have two firing squads in the morning. The more the merrier, I guess. Unless you're the guest of honor. It'd work all right if you could roll the darn things thinner. Look at that filament, Crucy. It's a disaster. Let the kid do it. He's got smaller hands. They're rolling the filaments by hand. Jeffrey scrapes the soot out of the lamps and Crucy rolls them into... That's not a filament. That's a rope. No wonder the glass keeps shattering. You either need smaller filaments or glass that can handle extremely high temperatures. Right now, you have neither. Well, kid, the future of the Edison light is in your hands. Ooh, that's not a terrifying level of responsibility or anything. We get a montage of various failures, a good 24 hours worth. Everybody's exhausted. Edison says, I give up. We have four hours left, and I'm using that to take a nap. Oh, get out there! Make the light! Do it! Edison isn't very good with kids, so the best he can come up with is, let me fix that sleeve for you. Come on, come on over here. Mr. Edison? Your sleeve may have to wait, Jeffrey. Edison said invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. It's time for that 1%. The thread! It's a perfect filament! He'll put the thread in a hot kiln until it turns to carbon, then use it as his filament. Needless to say, it works. I told him his filament was too big. When the heat it generates doesn't exceed the heat limit of the glass, the bulb doesn't explode. Who knew? Now about that pocket watch thingy. I hope it works okay. You're lucky if it works at all. This thing had the dirtiest movement I've ever seen. What did you do to get it that way? I don't think you'd believe me. There. I think that's it. No leftover pieces. A green light now. He says, what's it really for? So Jeffrey tells him, why not? You think Edison's going to believe him? But Jeffrey doesn't have time to mess with a brilliant man's head. He needs to get back to Bog. Here's your breakfast. We watched you escape last night. Congratulations. Would your escape have been any more successful? We must be desperate. She's a kitchen maid. She's much more. She's been secretly dumping freshly dug soil into the well out there. 
Some of her friends in the next cell just finished a tunnel with the intent of getting Lawrence out. But thanks to Bog, the Commandant cleared the entire cell block just for them. The way of escape is right there in the next cell, but it might as well be in Buckingham Palace, as Lawrence puts it. Bog's great idea ruined theirs. It's time for the firing squad. Lawrence says, even though it didn't work, that was a really good effort. Bog says, not good enough. No escape attempt would be good enough, gentlemen. There isn't a way in or out of this prison that I don't know about. Bet you didn't know about that one. Get up! Stop them! Credit. What's going on? Follow me. The tunnel leads to some catacombs under the city. It's one of those mazes where it would be easy to get lost forever if you don't have someone with you who knows where they're going. Fortunately, Medina is one of those people. Unfortunately, some soldiers are catching up to them. Or not. There are more soldiers coming, so maybe Bog should hang on to that. There. Oh, no. We'll dig it out. Hurry! They made it through to the catacombs. After them! Go! Yeah, somebody finally let the Commandant out of that cell. When it was all over, everyone concerned agreed that that was a bad idea. Yard, Terry! Bog, they find us! After her! This way! Get her! You gotta help her! No! She knew there was only one way out. She's a courageous woman. But they'll kill her, and Bog hasn't gotten to kiss her yet. Earlier, Medina told Bog she's no martyr. She may have spoken too soon. It's amazing what you can find inside yourself when you have to. Show me the way out of the catacombs. How did Lawrence escape? Lawrence has escaped! Lawrence has escaped! Lawrence! 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 The Commandant is quickly losing control of the room, but it's going to get worse. Lawrence told Bog that he has a cache of weapons and ammo just outside the city gate, and they're not about to leave Medina behind. Lawrence! Never mind the girl! Get him! Go! <laughs> With the gates blown open, all the prisoners are heading for the hills. There's no way the Commandant and his guards can take on all of them out in the open like that. The Commandant unties Medina and hauls her off, apparently hoping to use her as a hostage. Bog has other ideas. Get me out! Is it time for that kiss yet? Lawrence mounts his white horse and rides off in triumph, having taken Akaba. This is just the beginning for him. It's just another day on the job for Bog and Jeffrey. As far as we know, Bog never got that kiss. Maybe he doesn't have as much of the Bob Crane magic as we thought. Next thing we know, they're back in Menlo Park. Bog wants to know why. Jeffrey says, to see this. the first time? The very first. And astronomers have been complaining about light pollution ever since. I'm not sure that's exactly how Lawrence took Aqaba, but the Omni is green so it must be close enough. The Arabs did eventually pull the Commandant out of the well. He was making the water taste funny. <laughs> 